I found an Etsy shop who doubled her sales in the middle of the summer while everyone else is struggling and I dug deeper to try and figure out where these sales may be coming from. Yup, this is another episode of This Etsy Shop where I find and investigate Etsy shops who may be unconventionally blowing their shops up. Can a shop be a top seller with only six items in their shop with terrible SEO? They can and I investigate it. So a few weeks weeks ago I was browsing my competitor sales page on eRank seeing examples of the summer slump with most of the shops having lower than normal sales when something jumped out to me this shop chapter catchers has a big jump in sales around double the previous month's sales and in the middle of summer this bears some investigation I think clicking on their shop name I see some more information about them a three-year-old shop that really just seems to be taking off now and over 7,000 in sales that's pretty impressive looks like it's a print-on-demand t-shirt and hoodie shop now, if anything could be seen as a saturated niche, it's POD, except the print on demand isn't actually a niche. More of that later, but print on demand can be low effort work that a shop can churn out thousands of listings and many, many people try it and then they complain that they can't get sales. So what's this one doing right? and potentially wrong. I bet a few of you have already spotted a massive problem, but we'll get into this in a minute. But first, let's pop over to the shop on Etsy. Cute, actually. And when I talk about niche, this shop does have a defined niche. Clearly, it's for book lovers. It's obvious from the name, in the banner, and it's in the shop headline. Print on demand isn't the niche, it's the method, the manufacturing process. The niche is book nerds, and it looks like the millennial book talk aesthetic, can't say words. So that is a pretty well-defined niche. It's cute, bright, and feminine. That doesn't put other people off, but it really speaks to the people it's trying to speak to. And the images are nice. They don't look like standard print-on-demand mock-ups, walking on a beach or in a library or snuggled up in a pile of pillows. I like the style, honestly. Good reviews there as well, which is helping the shop. Great customer service includes finding a great print-on-demand company, if that's what you're doing, to manufacture your items to the quality your customers expect. The shop is filled in as much as it needs to be with about section policies, FAQs. Okay, there's nothing basically wrong with the shop and I think I spied an Instagram link. Is it social media that's driving all the traffic? This looks like the kind of items that are Instagrammable. So let's pop over there. Oh no, 500 followers and was that last post from Christmas? That's no shade, my social media game is really slacking also. Not much engagement on the posts, so I'm guessing Instagram is not driving the sales. Her link in Instagram is only to her shop, so we've got no clues there. Let's Google. There's the Etsy shop. And Facebook, is that where the buyers have come from? No, that's worse. No followers, no engagement. The chapter catchers. No, that's a different thing entirely. You always have to be careful with your shop name to see what other people are using something similar. Tic Tac, Tic Tac, Tic Tock. Nope, that's not an account. Is that them on Redbubble? The poster doesn't look like their style, but when I click, yep, that's them. But that's not helping their Etsy sales. So let's go into competitor listings. E-Rank has just started showing estimated sales for listings in shops, so we can get a look at what our estimated big sellers are. The biggest sellers seem to be this House of Winds t-shirt. Let's look at it. It's almost a year old with 100% visibility. That means the daily views are as high as we can pretty much see for any shop. It's doing amazing. Everything in the listing is filled in. Description is good with lots of info the buyers will need. Only four images? Is that an issue? Well, actually, no. You only need as many images as the customers need. Clearly, that's enough for her customers. The algorithm doesn't penalize you for not having enough photographs. Let's get back to the tags. This shop kind of has to be getting the sales from search. I can't see where else they're coming from. 
But look at that, one word tags and spelling mistakes, that's terrible, right? Well, actually no, it isn't so much a spelling mistake, more a term or acronym that E-Rank doesn't know yet. The fan base will understand them, so it's okay. And look, one word tags are not a big deal. The algorithm doesn't penalize you for that. It just means there's less space for more words you could use. But most of your views will probably just come from a few keywords, so the odd one word tag isn't actually a big deal. She didn't need this acronym there on its own, as it's included in other phrases. But actually thinking about it, for me, I kind of like that, because if you're using a tool like eRank, you can see the little search trend graph whenever you open this listing audit to track of how it, the keywords go in. So it doesn't help you on Etsy, but it doesn't harm you. And if it helps you remember what keywords you found important, then it's kind of okay. Now, looking at these keywords, they're almost all very low competition. That's surprising. That sounds like what we should be looking for, but sometimes it can be a sign of something else. Sometimes it means you can't sell this type of thing on Etsy. Perhaps the competition had their listings deactivated. Because we need to talk about that elephant in the room, IP. I always say you shouldn't try and sell anything you didn't create unless you have permission. Now, I know you can argue that she created the designs, but they're based on books that she didn't write. So selling things like this is trying to make money from someone else's work. But what about that extra bit I always say, unless you have permission? Look at the title. Right there it says licensed shirt. You can get permission. Look, I'm not an expert, but I have a friend who knows all about this from both sides actually. Starla, can you help me out a bit here? Talk to me about licensing and IP and all these confusing things. Starla Moore here from E-Rank, The Handmade Alphas, and author of science fiction book, The Channel. Stealing an author's IP is super uncool, and it's actually against the law. However, there are plenty of authors out there that are willing to license with you legally as long as you take the right steps. When going to contact authors, I recommend going to their official websites and finding their contact information directly, then reaching out to ask for what steps you need to take in order to obtain a legal license. Just make sure that you are being realistic with your target. Books like these are already owned by big film studios, so trying to obtain a license for these authors is going to be really, really hard. Instead, it's easier to focus on authors that are still up and coming that aren't as large or indie authors. For example, here are some of the authors that I currently work with. When licensing with authors, just make sure that you are prepared to pay a small percentage to those authors with each sale. When you're doing something like print on demand, you need to keep in mind those percentages that these authors are going to want in order to make sure that you're pricing appropriately and still making a profit. Most of the authors that I personally work with request around 10% to 20%, but this is just the authors that I have experience with that is obviously subject to change depending on what author you work with. Not to mention, it's super cool to be able to put something like officially licensed in your Etsy titles, which is really, really fun and a great way to gather authority on the platform. I'll personally be launching my own bookish shop very, very soon. So if you want some updates on that and you're interested in learning more about legal licensing, I plan to make some videos over on my own channel, Starla Moore. So feel free to subscribe to that if you're interested in it. All right, back to you, Pam. Starla, thanks so much. That helps a whole lot. And all of you, you should want to follow her. So I'm going to leave links in the description. So moving forwards, let's assume the shop knows what they're doing and have the rights or have great lawyers. If you missed in the latest Etsy news this week, we talked about how the hundreds of Etsy sellers who are potentially being sued for having smiley face things. So lots of tags with some search volume but really low competition. That is great, but it still doesn't explain those big spikes in sales. But look at this. A couple of the keywords have very big spikes in the past month. They looked like terrible keywords that no one was searching and then bam, suddenly everyone wants them. And if I look at a few more of our listings, I see something similar. This shop even created a few new listings just before the spike in keywords. Did the seller know something? If you're really into a niche, then you can sort of have insider information. Is there a new book coming out in a series? The author about to do a tour? A film coming out? Although, be aware of what Starla said about how it might be 
really hard to license once a TV show has their claws into a book series. But if you're really into this niche, then you know when something is just about to become popular. But even then, it's not enough to have found great low competition keywords that lots of people are just about to search for. There is actually one more step in the puzzle. Well, assuming you create your titles and tags to actually show up in search, but that isn't too complicated. People just like to complicate it, but just put those important keywords in your titles and tags. But the most important step is your items have to be good. They have to stand out in the search page. So let's pop over to Etsy and see what's showing up in the search. And when we search, I think this item in particular does stand out. The t-shirt by the beach of theirs, I don't really rate it much, but this bestseller, the design stands out way better than the other listings. The photo looks like the perfect place to curl up and read a book. It stands out without being too different, if you see what I mean. If it was bright neon, it might catch your eye, but in the wrong way and put you in the wrong mood. This has the feel of all the other photos just done a little better. It's their bestseller and I can see why. It stands out in all their shirts as well. And when we search the author's name the same, it just stands out, a good product with good photography. And that's the final key. If your item is amazing, it gets more clicks and sales than the other items. And the more clicks and sales mean Etsy ranks it higher, so it gets more clicks and sales. So it's like a cycle of win. If this shop has permission to sell what they're selling, then this shop is doing great. Finding a niche you really understand, knowing what events are just about to blow up, and making big, better products than anyone else. You can do really well on Etsy without social media. Although, this shop got 9,000 sales in one day with social media. You want to check out that video to see what they did. Subscribe here to let me know that you like these videos, and don't forget to visit the amazing Starla. She's even better at me than this YouTube thing.